In this topic, we'll be reviewing the different options for importing list and open balances into QuickBooks. These options are IIF file, import from Excel, paste from Excel, and a third-party application Transaction Pro importer. Regardless of the way you choose to get the data into QuickBooks, we here at Fourlane do not import more than a thousand lines at a time. Uh, trying to shove 20,000 customers into a database, as an example, can cause corruption, and so usually we do it about 1,000 lines at a time. Try to take it slow so that the database can accept the data. All right, so going into IIF file, IIF stands for Intuit Interchange Format. The IIF file is a proprietary file format created more than a decade ago to import and export lists and transactions with QuickBooks. Since its creation, QuickBooks has had two major database changes. The format for the IIF file, though, has not been updated with those changes. Okay. In fact, when you go and look in, you know, on the QuickBooks Support website and you download sample IIF file formats, it has like 2004 format, QuickBooks Enterprise 5.0, and then QuickBooks Enterprise 7.0 format, and that's the last one. <laughs> so it's been a while. Uh, I'm sure you all have run across it. It can cause data corruption, so we really advise to use this sparingly. Very rarely do we choose to use IIF file formats. Um, the format for lists is pretty simple to use, but for transactions it can get quite difficult. So today we're not going to talk about importing open balances via an IIF file at all, uh, because it's much easier. There are much easier ways to do this. I did want you guys to see the format though so that you can understand the difficulty and why we're choosing not to import transactions this way. So first I'm going to go ahead and pull up here a sample IIF file uh, from for an invoice. Okay. When reading the IIF file, the first line that has an exclamation point means we're starting to import a different type of information. Then if we follow along the row, Right? It tells us what type of information we're entering. So this one's talking about the QuickBooks file, but if we come into account here, right? So we think, what's an account, chart of accounts, the account name, reference number and timestamp, account type, opening balance, description, account number, right? So fields that we're used to seeing. Okay. When you're importing an, an invoice IIF file, all right, there's a lot of fields, right, that go into creating an invoice. You have to have the chart of accounts accounts set up appropriately before you can import the items. You have to have the items set up. You have to have the customer information set up, the job type, the event, you know, all this information has to be set up ahead of time before you can get to kind of the meat of the transaction. So now down here, we can see where we start the transaction, exclamation transaction, right? And it tells us transaction type, date, account name, etc. All right, so the first line here, this is showing us the header information for the actual transaction. So we see that the invoice, right, it's an invoice, it's dated 8-2, it's gonna hit accounts receivable, the customer's name is customer, the total for the invoice is $10.25, um, the document number is number 10, right, so we see some information across the top there. Then down below here are going to be our splits, so our columnized or our tax information, okay. So we can see here, again, the income account that's used. Um, here we can see that the amount is negative here, so negative 5. Uh, my assumption is that because it's a credit, right, that's why we have it set up as negative. Um, then we have a quantity of negative one as well, but then the price, right? So I can see that this is equating to price is positive. I assume that's because negative times negative equals positive. Uh, but you can see it's pretty confusing and it's not in a really kind of clean format that we can set up, like not a columnized format necessarily because this is different, this is different information for the same transaction than what this is, okay? All right, and looking at a bill, Bill has a lot less information on this one at least, um, but you can see starting the transaction up top here. And um, so here's the header part of the transaction. So it's gonna hit accounts payable, the vendor's ABC company. Again, the amount is negative because I assume because it's a credit, right, to accounts payable, right, and some other information there. Then we have the items information or the splits information down here. So we have the, you, you know, um, eight, the date again, 
if we have a account that's in a sub account of another one you have to use that colon in there to to say that you know utilities is the header account water is the sub account positive amount on the split transaction etc so once you see some of the other videos here you'll understand why we don't use this format to import in any kind of transaction so instead now we're going to focus on the customer and vendor lists. I'm going to go into File, Utilities, Export, List to IAF File. You can export the customer and vendor list at the same time, but I don't recommend doing that because it sticks it in the same sheet, okay, in the same document in, in Excel. So I'm just going to create or export the customer list, okay, then I browse to where I want to export it, give it a name. You want to leave it as an IAF file for now. All right, and then we're going to do the same thing with the vendor list. So file, utilities, export, list to IAF files, vendor list, okay, give it a name and export. All right. In order to open an IAF file, you need to first start inside of Excel. Uh, you go in to open and say, you know, other workbooks or recent workbooks, computer, I'm going to say here, and then you're going to navigate to where uh, your Excel file, where you stored your IAF file. Now, the one thing you want to make sure is down here that you're selecting all files instead of just all Excel files, which is its normal default, okay? So when I say all files, I can see here the QuickBooks import export file for my customer list. So that's the .iif file. Now I have converted it over to be a CSV so that we can look at it and play around with it right now. If you do convert it over to being a CSV file format, when you're ready to import it back in as an IAF file, you have to save it as a text format and put the extension .iif on the end of it. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my customer list that we just exported. Now you're going to get this little text import wizard and you can go ahead and say finish and it opens up the information here for you in the in the different columns. Now the first 20 or so lines here, right, we don't really care about because all I care about right now is a customer list. I don't care about all these custom fields, etc. All of this I just want to go ahead and usually I delete it. I'm going to hide it in this example because I'm going to be doing this webinar a couple times. I don't want to get rid of the data all the time. Okay, so now that we have eliminated that, we can see the fields here that exported based on the, the customers that we created, right? So I have customer two, four lane, job one, job two. Now notice the format of job one and job two. In order to show it as a job, it has to be four lane colon job one, job two. And that's unique here to the IIF files. There are some other formats that use that customer colon job. Um, I'm sorry, that's not unique. There are other formats that use that customer colon job as well, okay? But it's good to understand that. If I wanted to go further, so let's say I had customer, customer site, and then colon job, you just continue to add another colon to make that three sub-levels down, okay? The reference number and timestamp are not important pieces of data uh, as far as what we see. Um, but they are something that we need to fill in. So generally what I do is I fill in uh, the additional fields here and then I just kind of copy these down. Okay, business address one. So you can see here where we talked about before, address line one is four lane, address line two then begins a street. City, state, and zip are all in one cell. That's important to be aware of and understand because a lot of times in other programs when we're converting data they're in three different cells city state zip and sometimes country so it's important to see how the IAF file functions with that okay moving on to ship to address it's the same thing right we have the ship to address looks similar to the bill to address but you know first line is still company name Moving across, we have the phone number that we entered. We don't have phone number two in here, right? The second phone number did not export to IAF file here. The fax number uh, did export main email address, but the secondary email address is not here. The note did uh, export, but notice what the note is. This isn't actually our note that we put in, right? This is our account number that we put in. So you have to be aware, right, that this header field called note is actually your account number. Now, con 
cont it's supposed to be contact contact one and contact two here are actually our additional contacts in QuickBooks. So when you're inside of QuickBooks Customer Center, we have our contacts tab here. Now again, when you create a new contact, there are a lot of fields available here, right? But this is only one cell in our IAF file, and that's because it's just the name of the contact that we can import through here. Uh, customer type, terms, taxable or non-taxable, sales tax, our limit here is positive 5,000. Resale number, right, came across that we put in. Now the sales rep, you do want to pay attention to the format of the sales rep here. So the first, it has first name, last name, right, Marjorie Adams, colon, three, which is telling me that it's the type, the third type of uh, list item, so it's an employee, right? So we also have other names that it could be, or vendor, right? So one, two, three. Uh, and then also the initials, okay? So funky format there, but just need to be aware of it. Not anything we can't deal with. Uh, tax item, here is our note now. So I have my test note in here, right? So that was my actual note, it's under notepad. Then I have my company name again, first name, last name, my custom field. And I'm gonna keep moving on over here. So I have my difficult job in my description, job type is addition, job status. This is another one to note, right? It says one, remember we made that pending. So one equals pending, right? If you need to get to some of the other options in the job status list, you probably wanna export a couple more sample jobs so you can find out what the status means and what numbers they are. Uh, the dates, start date, all that's fine. And then the hidden column here, of course, this is telling you whether it's an active or inactive. And then we have our price level, new price level on the side over here, okay? So the majority of the fields uh, are coming out and, and you know are accessible here in the IAF file. We are missing the preferred send method and the preferred payment methods as well. And also missing, right, some of the uh, phone number fields that we talked, entered, you know, uh, email fields, etc. So now let's go ahead in and take a look at the vendor. All right, so again, vendor is very similar. We want to go ahead and get rid of these lines up top here until we see that exclamation vendor. I'm just going to hide them for now. Uh, when you're importing in the columnized form, when you're importing, you don't need to import those additional lines. So you really can delete them. It doesn't delete any information out of your system. It just says, I don't care about this information when I'm importing my vendor list, right? Okay, so here we have the name, right? ABC, into it. We had set up the comptroller when we set up the sales tax item. Same, the reference number and timestamps are in here. We have the print as, address one, right, is the actual name of the company. Address two is the start of the street address. City, state, zip are all in one cell. Okay, we have vendor type, consultant. Uh, again, contact one and contact two are available here. Phone number, fax number is here. The second phone number is not. Email, the first email is there. Our note is again our account number. Our tax ID number can import here. Um, our limit, our, um, our credit limit here is negative, so negative $5,000. Um, our terms, net 15, I didn't put a note in here, but this is where if I had a note tied to the vendor, this is where that would be imported. Company name, first name, last name, custom field, and we scroll over. If you haven't looked at these in a while, it used to be we only were allowed five custom fields. Now they're, you know, we can go all the way up to the 15 here, and I am an enterprise, which is why it allows up to the 15. So is it eligible for a 1099 N or Y, right? So that's important. Again, a lot of times when we're looking from outside systems, it'll say no, yes, or it'll just say 1099 or something like that. So you want to get it in the right format of N or Y. Y means that the box is checked. Yes, it's eligible, eligible for a 1099. If it's inactive or active, I don't suggest bringing in any inactive vendors or customers or anything anyway. And then this Dell count, notice how it has a consistency of zero. So same thing, we would just copy it down when we're um, importing our additional vendors there. Okay, we are missing some fields from the address, the bill rate level is not there, um, and those account settings, right? When I set up what my standard accounts were, that's not available here. So in review, 
pros of using an IAF file. It handles a lot of fields, most of the fields for the list items. It's a quick way to get information in, you know, list data into QuickBooks. Uh, it's a way that people had to resort to for a long time. So it's kind of like the go-to, right? You know, the way that people have been using QuickBooks for a long time. This was the only way to get data in for a while um, besides using Transaction Pro Importer. So, you know, this is one that people are more familiar with. Um, and you can get to the sample data easily by entering a couple of uh, example items and then exporting it to IAF so you can kind of see, you know, what's needed. The cons, there are about three pages of potential errors. If you go to the Intuit support site, how article 12778. Uh, the majority of those are around transactions, but still, I limit my use. I really, really limit my use. It's a last resort usually. I mean, if I'm importing 50,000 customers for some somebody, uh, sometimes I can't use some of the other methods. The other methods will crash, or in a Transaction Pro importer, it won't crash, obviously, but it does take a little bit longer than an IAF file, and IAF files a lot faster, um, but, you know, expect to do two to three rebuilds, okay, and still even doing the rebuilds and everything correct, you still kind of have to keep your fingers crossed that there isn't going to be any kind of corruption. Um, so you just, you know, want to be aware of that. You do have to be in single user mode when you're using IAF file import, so you'd have to kick anybody else out who is in the file if, you know, there are other people working while you're doing it. And then there's no real error log. So what happens is that if there's an error, let's say we get through the customers we have we're importing, you know, I know I said a thousand customers at a time, so like, you know, it gets to customer number 400 on the list. It'll pop up an error and it'll say error line 401, right? Because it considers the header, um, the first line at, as line one, and then you have all your customers. So then you have to go in, and it'll just kick out, it'll stop. So it has imported up to customer 399. Those are all in there. And then it gets down to 400. You have to go look at it, see what the error is, and then start again. Or like, you know, delete the first 399, start from 400, move forward. So it can get kind of messy there because there's no error and it doesn't continue once it hits an error. All right, so that's an IIF file.